Okay, we'll pray. Okay. Um, you know, what we've seen in, uh, what we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul says of uh, you know, spiritual experiences that he's had, um, taken up to the seventh, third heavens, and uh, um, this is, and and we know that that's for that was for a purpose. And every spiritual experience, you know, God gives to, um, or God um, takes us through, is to really reinforce the fact is that He is all powerful, He's all knowing, and also serves a purpose. Every vision, uh, every prophetic word, um, you know, there's a call of God, there's an assignment of God. Uh, so uh, for man, God brings that, uh, accomplishes that. So let's let's just pray and ask God um, to reveal His mind, reveal His will, reveal His purposes in all these wonderful ways, right? Through His Word, through His Spirit, through um, through maybe even through other people uh, to minister to us through the prophetic word, through uh, visions and dreams, and you know other encounters. Let's pray and ask the Lord to do that. Father, we thank you this morning that you're sovereign God, that you're all-powerful one, all-knowing one. And this morning, God, we, we come before you in all humility. We come before you yielded and surrendered. And we ask, Lord, that you would, yield, that you would uh, Lord, reveal, O oh God, your plan, your purposes. Reveal your mind to us, O oh God, your heart to us, Lord. Um, in all these wonderful ways that we see in Scripture, especially what we read in Second Corinthians 12, Lord, all these spiritual experiences that uh, that Paul had, oh God, and we know it was for a specific purpose. And, and Lord, we also ask that you would um, you would uh, reveal yourself to us in all these wonderful ways. And we know that you are a God who cannot be contained, O oh God, that you are all powerful, all knowing one. So we ask, Lord, we, we open up our hearts to you. That we ask that you would open our eyes to see you, open our ears to hear you, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Oh, Monday you were in Chennai. Okay. There's a lot of rains there. Yeah. Okay, so let's um, let's look at um, Second Corinthians. I think uh, we stopped at um, verse six, right? Um, so Paul talking about how he was caught up to heaven and uh, what he experienced there. So he talks about that and also um, talks about some of this uh, what he heard, uh, and he says that it was in inexpressible words. Right, uh, which is not lawful for man to utter, uh, meaning that it's it's he's it not permitted to speak those words or to uh, give a revelation of that here on earth. Right, um, so he talks about that. Um, I mean, he mentions that. Okay, let me just uh, share the screen. Okay. Then he goes on to talk about something else in verse 7. And uh, verse 7 uh, to 10, he actually gives an explanation for why he says in, you know, in the previous chapter, chapter 11 and verse 30, um, he says, you know, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity or which concern my weakness and body, weakness uh, in my mind. Um, or feebleness of body, you know, that's what infirmity is. So he's saying that, you know, he would rather boast in that. And here it, it's kind of explanation you know, why he takes pleasure or why he can actually boast in those kind of things, right? Because normally speaking, you know, nobody would like to boast about that. You would like to boast about your strength. You would like to boast about or talk highly about your accomplishments. Um, so, but why does he say that I would boast in you know, something that results in feebleness of body and mind? Why, do, why should he say that? Right. So here he gives uh, you know the explanation for that. Okay, let's read um, chapter sorry chapter twelve verse seven, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. 
concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Okay. So verse uh, 7, verse 7 says, Lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation. So Paul is a person who, uh, we know that he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. There was an abundance of revelation, revelation of the truth of God's word, which was which was not revealed to any other you know, uh, it was was revealed to him, and uh, you know, especially about the cross, especially about uh, um, the substitutionary work of Christ, and and so on. So, so many things about the gifts of the Spirit, uh, which we see in, uh, in the previous epistle, and um, uh, in the book of Romans, you know, about righteousness that comes through faith in Christ, and and so on. Right. So, a lot of revelation. So he's saying, lest I should be exalted, lest that. You know, he be exalted above measure by the by these revelations. He says, "A thorn in the flesh was given to me." Now, very interesting, right? He says, uh, "Lest I become puffed up, or lest I be exalted above measure, in beyond the ordinary means." Right? A thorn in the flesh was given to me a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. So that's the objective, right? Uh, lest he be exalted by the abundance of revelations. Now, a lot of people, you know, the, the, so he says a thorn in the flesh. You know, thorn is something that's very nagging, irritating, painful, uh, you know, which is there over and over again, which, um, you know, causes one to, be uh, irritated, uh, which causes pain, which causes dis discomfort. Right. So he talks about that uh, something called the thorn in the flesh. So uh, a lot of people have tried to explain what this thorn in the flesh is, and uh, uh, but when we look at that verse itself, he says a thorn in the flesh was given, and he kind of explains that he says a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Okay, so, which which means that um, there was this messenger of Satan. Okay, so people have tried to explain. Maybe it was a physical condition. Maybe it was a sickness. Right. Maybe it was a a problem with his eyes. Um, maybe it was you know something like that. So, um, but when we look at the text itself, he explains who it was or what it was. He says it was a messenger of Satan. Okay, um, The word messenger, again, in the Greek meaning angelos, uh, the word angel, from which we get the word angel, the Greek word angelos, which means uh, it can be used for heavenly being, it can be used for you know, earthly beings also, a messenger or, a, or a, you know, someone who's a spiritual leader um, who is a Who's really a spokesperson or someone who's a, who's communicating a message, right? So we see in Revelation the same word used for the for the leaders of the churches, the angelos, right? So um, so is the angelos or angel of Satan, okay, messenger of Satan? So so what was the messenger of Satan's objective? Was to buffet him, to to come trouble him, to, to buffet means to strike over and over again, to hit over and over again. So we don't know in what nature, in what way the messenger of Satan was you know, troubling him, but it says that this was something that happened. Okay, um, And uh, in the previous chapter, right, chapter 11, Paul talks about uh, the kind of hardships he endured when he says, uh, you know, the things that uh, qualify him to be a minister of uh, God. So, um, 
lists on law various things right he talks about uh, punishments he talks about uh, dangers and some of these things he actually willingly took it upon himself in the sense he would say okay i need to go i need to travel i need to share the gospel so something that was intentional he went about doing it and as a result of it he faced those hardships you no know, dangers maybe you know rough weather uh, shipwreck and all those things and some of the other things were what people did to him right uh, an opposition to the gospel work okay so it was a persecution uh, and uh, people opposing the message and and all that so that was in opposition to the work right so so what did uh, paul do right so this this messenger of satan this uh, 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 the came to buffet him and uh, lest he be exalted right and paul immediately prayed to the lord verse 8 we see that concerning this thing i pleaded with the lord so he prayed he asked the lord not once but thrice three times which means which means the you know the condition persisted or the messenger of satan uh, doing whatever he was doing that was persisting and so he prayed three times um that it might depart and he said to me meaning the lord to whom he prayed he said to him my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness okay so what is he saying you know my grace is sufficient is enough okay. and we know that you know he uses this word sufficient um a couple of times in this episode you know the, we see that he uses um uh, in chapter 3 verse 5 you know not that we are sufficient of ourselves but our sufficiency um is from god okay so he makes us competent he makes us uh, you know he bring gives us the ability is what he's saying so here is uh, what is the lord saying you know my grace is sufficient it's it's enough it is more than enough and to make you competent right to make you to give you the ability so saying i will uh, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness so this is what the lord says my strength the lord's strength is uh, made perfect or is brought to completion in uh, the weakness that he was experiencing okay so um my strength is made perfect in weakness okay so that was the explanation uh, the, the the lord saying that grace is my grace is sufficient because um my strength uh would will will be enough to make uh, uh, uh make you sufficient right so paul says verse 9 second part of it therefore most gladly okay therefore most gladly so he's come to that conclusion because i heard this from the lord that he will make his strength perfect or complete um in my weakness in what i'm going through in my feebleness most gladly he says i will rather boast in my infirmities i will boast in these kind of conditions because uh, because of what the lord does what do he do that the power of christ may rest upon me because god has promised something the lord has promised something the lord jesus has promised something saying that my grace is sufficient my strength is made perfect in a weakness so there is a maturing of my strength in you, in you uh despite your weakness or in your weakness right so so paul came to that conclusion and he says you know therefore i boast i take pleasure verse 10 he says therefore uh, verse 9 he says therefore uh, i will boast in my infirmities why that the power of god will rest upon me okay so that's the thing you know he's not boasting because he's going through some 
some kind of a, you know struggle and he's not boasting oh look at me i'm you know i'm going through this he's boasting because the power of christ rests upon him right verse 10 i take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in needs in persecutions in distresses for christ's sake so all this you know infirmities reproaches needs persecutions distresses for the sake of christ so which means in the path of ministry or while sharing the message or the as a result of uh, doing ministry as a result of that when he's experiencing all this he he says i take pleasure in it right i will gladly uh, i will gladly go through it i will gladly go through all these things distresses but look at the reason i'm doing it for christ's sake and the reason is that for when i am weak then i am strong okay so that's the conclusion it's not that i continue to be weak i continue to you know be in that state of helplessness and you know i or uh, failure or whatever no because when i when i'm in that state then christ strength and power is made perfect in me matured in me as a result of it when i'm weak actually i'm strong so he's saying i would rather you know boast i take pleasure he says i take pleasure in infirmities um that's worst and you know it's a uh, it's uh, which means it's it's a great you know uh, it's a great testimony you know to for one to say that you know, i take pleasure in it uh, which means that he is thinking well of it you know, if he goes goes through a you know persecution um he's actually not thinking of it as a difficulty but he's actually thinking well of it you know uh, he, he's having something positive to talk about it and the greek word says you know to think well of or to you know to think good of to be pleased about uh in order it, it also means you know to be even pleased to this uh, extent of being willing to go through it so he takes i he says i take pleasure in it why because when i'm weak then i am strong so he knows that he will experience the power of god he will experience the power of god in his in his body in his mind in, the, in that situation right in that circumstance he will experience because he's become a target for the power of god and so he says that you know i i take pleasure because uh, i will experience this i will experience the power of god and when he experiences the power of god then he can boldly declare that i am strong strong i am strong i experience the power of god to both endure and to overcome to endure and to overcome you know paul um he says right uh, uh you know uh, in the previous uh, uh in the previous episode he says you know i'm led in a triumphant procession in christ jesus um and and so on so that uh, there's victory in the blood of jesus you know in all his epistles you know he talks about the victory that we are more than conquerors through christ and so on so uh, so he says that you know there is um i'm favorably i think of all these things favorably whatever i go through i think of it favorably i take pleasure in it because when i am weak then i am strong okay so a couple of things for us to remember okay what is this uh, thorn in the flesh um so you know there could be many uh, Uh, uh many uh, references uh, to thorn in the flesh or maybe speculation you know maybe it is uh, uh maybe it is um, uh, let's say uh, people might say maybe it is uh, referring to some kind of a, a sickness maybe it is some kind of uh, uh, a condition in his body uh, etc but we need to be clear you know there are is is very Uh, paul explains in that same verse itself what is that thorn in the flesh he so he explains that so there's no need for any other you know conclusion or any any doubt about it um so he's specifically talking about that right so so he is uh, because of which he takes pleasure 
in he thinks favorably about he li- lists down certain things infirmities reproaches which means uh, you know, insults or people insulting him he says it's fine you know because when i go through that for the sake of the gospel then i experience the power of god infirmities weakness of body well uh, he he talks about it no he says in hunger uh, if you look at chapter 11 and verse 27 it says in weariness and toil in sleeplessness in hunger in thirst in in fastings in cold in nakedness so these are all you know some things physical discomfort and infirmities that is is going through so um you know that also you know for the sake of christ right he talks about reproaches he talks about needs maybe maybe you know some necessities um that i need these things some constraints some persecutions and uh, you know some anguish and pressure and you know pressure all these is going through for the sake of ministry for the sake of taking the gospel and and for the sake of doing ministry but he says that you know in all this i take pleasure because i know that the power of god will rest upon me i know that his strength the lord's strength is made perfect or complete in my weakness um so i will have, i'll be able to endure it i'll be able to go through it i'll be able still be able to minister with the power of god so that's the perspective you know that's the reason why paul says you know i take pleasure in infirmities i will boast in infirmities so you know these two things we need to be clear off because um you know uh, first of all to understand that yes thorn in the flesh paul is talking about a messenger of satan he's not talking about anything else right a messenger of satan to come and uh, strike him and and uh, secondly um uh, he's he's saying that he takes pleasure in it or uh, you know in all those things that he lists lists down to difficulties that the power of god may rest upon him so that he might endure and overcome that okay so that's the second thing we need to uh, remember and the third thing you know about this 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 um, you know this passage this portion of scripture that we need to also understand is that uh, um that um uh, you know that that we we come to a place of uh, uh knowing uh, in the sense uh we know that god is not visiting people with sickness you know he the lord jesus he carried our sickness on the cross he carried the symptoms of sickness uh, uh disease um and everything on the cross so that we might be heal so that we might receive healing so um so that's the that's what the lord jesus did for us on the cross so therefore uh what he died for what he carried on the cross um is, is he did that so that he might remove it from our lives okay not to reintroduce it into our lives okay we need to be Uh, sure of that so that's the third thing you know that it's not that god is giving this sickness in order to humble us okay sometimes people come to that you know uh, he's he's giving this sickness in order to humble no he took it on the cross so that we might be free of it okay what about you know these kind of things that is happening in my life it is to humble me you know, scripture is very clear it says that it was given to paul he received an abundance of revelation the abundance of revelation and uh, so much that he wrote two thirds of the new testament so we don't even come close right to qualify for that and so we might say you know oh because of abundance of revelation because of all these things that i've experienced and gone through and uh, what the lord has taught in my life and taught me because of which you know uh, i'm being humbled through all these things no you and i do not even qualify right um, he was an apostle with a very unique uh, calling and uh, he uh, he was a founding apostle which means he laid down the doctrine and and uh, and scripture god used him the lord used him to you know um, write down scripture lay down scripture so it was a very unique call 
Right? So you and I do not qualify for that. So we should not come to that conclusion and say, you know, oh, the, I've got this thorn in the flesh because of the abundance of revelation. We don't qualify for that. Okay. So some of these things uh, for us to remember uh, and keep in mind when we go through these passages. Right. Okay. Let's read um, verse eleven onwards. Okay. Uh, it's of course a continuation. So here, you know, you you read some more and you you receive some more revelation of uh, of him saying, you know, I take pleasure in infirmities. Uh, verse 11, I have become a fool in boasting, you have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended by you, for in nothing was I behind the most eminent apostles, though I am nothing. Truly, the signs of an apostle were accomplished among you with all perseverance, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. For what is it which you were inferior to other churches except that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me this wrong. Okay, so what is he saying? You know, he's come, he's uh, he's talking about the other apostles, right? If you if you look at uh, chapter eleven, uh, he's looking, he's, he's uh, you know whom he called the eminent apostles, right? He's saying, I'm not inferior to them. I'm not in any way lower than those eminent apostles, you know, which we read in chapter 11 and verse 5. Uh, and and uh, it, in fact, they're false apostles because uh, the way they lived their life, the way they ministered was, was to take something out of people and not to add to them, right? To, uh, to, to, uh, Take of their things to um, you know to actually rob them to uh, to um, he says you know even to strike them on the face you know it, it was like that the way they ministered it was like striking them on the face and and so uh, that was how they uh, they ministered that is how they lived their lives so here Paul says you know um, uh, you have compelled me to boast about that you have compelled me to by because of your action, because of your behavior, you know, you've, you've compelled me to talk about that. So I've become a fool in boasting. You know, I've boasted about, uh, I've compared myself to them. I've talked about my life, um, you know, uh, myself and my ministry to you and, and so on. So, you know, I've, I was, I was not inferior, you know, I'm not uh, in any way lower than those people. You know, as you suppose, as you judged externally, I'm not in any way lower than that. Okay. Verse 12, he says, truly the signs of an apostle was confirmed or were accomplished among you. Right? The signs of an apostle, it was actually very clearly displayed among you, is what he's saying. And what are those signs? He says, with all perseverance, right? Um, the signs of an apostle. So uh, he goes on to say, you know, something supernatural happened. Signs, wonders, mighty deeds. In signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. These signs of the apostle were accomplished among you. Okay, were actually brought about uh, in uh, among you when I was there among you in the church. So this was accomplished. This uh, was performed, right? These signs, you saw it. You saw the signs. You saw the miracles. You saw the uh, mighty deeds that happened. So it was done uh, among you. And uh, and then he goes on to say, you know, for in what way, uh, in in uh, what is it in which you were in fear to, to other churches, you know, when you compare to other churches, um, you know, I was not burdensome to you. Okay. If in any way you think that you know I was inferior, or he's saying in 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 what way you know were you were inferior to other churches? In no way, except that I did not burden you with my needs. I I did not take any money from you. I did not burden you. Okay. So signs of the apostles were accomplished among them. So he says, I was not in any way inferior. Okay, let's read from verse 14 now. Now for the third time, I'm ready to come to you and I will not be burdensome to you for I do not seek yours, but you. 
for the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for your souls. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I am loved. But be that as it may, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you by cunning. Did I take advantage of you by any of those whom I sent to you? I urged Titus and sent our brother with him. Did Titus take advantage of you? Did we not walk in the same spirit? Did we not walk in the same steps? Again, do you think that we excuse ourselves to you? We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things, beloved, for your edification. For I fear, lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I wish, and that I shall be found by you such as you do not wish, lest there be contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, backbitings, whisperings, conceits, tumults. Lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and I shall mourn for many who have sinned before and have not repented of the uncleanness, fornication, and lewdness which they have practiced. Okay, so Paul here is saying, you know, I'm coming for the thir third time. Right, first time was when he was there with them, uh, and then uh, he was there for about eighteen months, one and a half years. He taught. And the second time was on the way to Macedonia. It was an unplanned visit. So now it's going to be the third time. And he's saying, I'm ready and I will not be burdensome. Again, you know, as true to the way he ministered, he's not going to be burdensome. He's not going to use or take any of their money. So he says, for I do not seek yours, meaning I do not seek what belongs to you, okay, but I seek you. No, you as a person, I respect you, I honor you, uh, and I long to be with you. And, and he also says, you know, uh, share, talks about how much he loves them, though they do not reciprocate that same love. Though, you know, in their actions, in their speech, they don't show that same love that Paul has shown them. Okay, so he says, um, you, know, you, you, do not, uh, you do not show that same kind of love. Right. Um, the more abundantly I love, the less I am loved. Okay. And yeah, in verse 14, he also says, you know, the children ought not to lay up for the parents. You know, I, I'm not going to come. And because for me, you are my spiritual children. Um, so actually, in the natural, the, the children don't usually uh, lay up money, it means save or store, uh, you know, wealth. For the sake of the parents, no, they don't do that. It's it's the parents' responsibility, uh, or they are the, the parents are the ones who actually save and store wealth uh, so that the children could receive that. So that's the heart of the parents. So this is the heart I have. So therefore, I do not seek yours, your material benefit or what you what belongs to you. I don't seek that, but I seek you as a person. Right. Um, so he's saying. Uh, you know, uh, the it doesn't. You know, he says it doesn't matter. You know, the fact that I am loved less, even though I I love abundantly, I'm loved less by you. You know, be that as it may be. I'm right? saying it's fine. It's okay. Um, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you by cunning. Okay. Um, did I take advantage of you? by any of those whom I sent to you. Now, Paul and his ministry team, he's talking about Titus, he's talking about the other brother, you know, he's not named, but um, so he says, I, I urged Titus and sent our brother with him. Did Titus take advantage of you? Did we not walk in the same steps, in the same spirit? So he's saying, we ministered in the same way. We lived our life in the same way. Okay, so, um, we did not in any way uh, take advantage of you, take advantage of you know your hospitality, take advantage of your things. We did not do that. Um, you know, um, so he says, you know, we, I, we speak before God in Christ. You know, God is the witness that whatever we do, or the way we lived our life, and the way we ministered, it was for your edification. 
So the way he ministered, you know, Paul communicated spiritual truth. Paul also confronted their, you know, mistakes. He corrected them. So everything was for their edification, to build them up. Right? It was never to destroy their lives. So, uh, and, and verse 20 and 20, 21 says, you know, I fear, this is my fear, that when I come, I will not see you as I wish to see you. Right? So what he's saying is that when I come and uh, if there's still fights, you know, you still have fights, you still, there's the works of the flesh, like, you know, the selfish ambitions, and backbitings and whisperings and, and pride and, and all these things are there. I don't wish to see you that way. Right? My fear is that if I come and I still see you like that. And my fear is also that you see me the way you don't wish to see me. You know, I, which means that I come um, in, a, in a way to discipline, to bring in correction, in stern, um, you know, being stern and being firm. Uh, and I, and my, my fear is that you, you don't wish to see me that way, right? Because he's already, you know, they've already encountered his correction and everything and his, uh, you know, strong words. So this is my fear, he says, if such things are there, if uh, contentions and, and uh, you know, strife, strife and fornication and lewdness and all these works of the flesh are there, then he is compelled, he is going to be strict. He's going to be, you know, uh, going to bring in correction. He's going to discipline them. So he's saying, my fear is that, you know, you don't wish to see me that way and I don't wish to see you with all these things. Right? So, um, so with that, uh, we come to the end of uh, chapter 12. Okay, so uh, before we go to chapter 13, any, um, any doubts, any questions, uh, we can talk about that, uh, especially about chapter 12. Um, you know, any any doubts and or anything that you want to share also so i ho i hope it's clear about uh, you know the thorn in the flesh uh, i hope it's clear about uh, why paul boasts in his infirmities um, you know sometimes we might think no oh, hey, infirmities uh, if it is some kind of a physical condition and the Lord Jesus carried it upon himself on the cross. Now, why is Paul boasting about it if he's you know, going through these kind of things? Well, the reason is that he will experience the power of God to endure and overcome. Okay, uh, so that's the thing. Um, okay, any any doubts at all? Okay. Right. Um, okay. Then let's look at chapter thirteen. Okay, that's the that's the conclusion of this epistle. Let's look at chapter uh, thirteen. Okay, so chapter 13, uh, let's read the first few verses. This will be the third time I'm coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. I have told you before and foretell as if I were present the second time. And now being absent, I write to those who have sinned before and to all the rest that if I come again, I will not spare. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, who is not weak towards you, but mighty in you. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves? that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you are disqualified. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Okay. So, um, you know, he says that 
he will not hold back when he visits them again this third time when he he's is saying that i want to tell you that uh, and i'm writing to you now to all those who have sinned before uh, and to everyone this time when i come and if i see the same kind of things i will not spare you you know i will not hold myself back i there will be discipline there will be disciplinary action there will be correction okay now he says since you seek a proof of christ speaking in me who is not weak towards you but mighty in you okay mighty in you so the 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 Corinthian church and also some of them they were comparing paul to other apostles and wanted to see the proof of christ's work like in him in paul um, probably you know more of signs more of wonders whatever you know but so paul says that hey you know he lives by the power of god he was crucified in weakness talking about the lord jesus and we also are weak in him but we shall live with him by the power of god towards you so that will be you know you will experience you know though you are weak physically and in appearance etc but you will experience the miraculous power what he does in us and through you through us right so um so those of you who are comparing and who want to who want to see that he says you first of all examine yourself you check you investigate you examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith okay uh, and not disqualified so he's saying you know are you living uh, are you living according to the, the the faith are you living according to the commitment to christ are you living according to christ or is it just an external religious thing right so you you check yourself you examine yourself and that word examine means to to test to uh, to objectively look at oneself to scrutinize you know, it means to look carefully um so you know it's none nothing of the external things right so external things like maybe probably you know you can't say just because a person is attending church or just because a person does some religious duties okay i'm giving uh x amount of money to the you know, to ministry or to church uh because of that you know i am in christ you know that's that's not the case at all so he's saying you know you you examine yourself you see that you are not disqualified in any way right because uh, all these external things are not what qualifies us so so do you not you know he says uh, verse 5 do you not know yourselves that jesus christ is in you so that's the qualification the christ is in us that the uh, holy spirit indwells us now that's the qualification nothing else none, none of those external things are the qualifications right so you're saying he's saying you know test yourself uh, i trust that you will know that we are not qualified so we ourselves it's not the external things again it is christ in us so we know that we are not disqualified in any way right um okay let's look at um, verse 7 now i pray to god that you do no evil not that we should appear approved but that you should do what is honorable though we may seem disqualified for we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth for we are glad when we are weak and you are strong that this also we pray that you may be made complete therefore i write these things being absent lest being present i should use sharpness according to the authority which the lord has given me for edification and not for destruction okay so he's uh, he's saying i pray that you do no evil not that we should appear approved but that you should do what is honorable 
Okay, so um, so it, it saying you know you you don't do uh, uh, evil things. You don't get into something that is not uh, right or uh, something that is unrighteous. Right? So you do what is honorable. Don't indulge or don't get into anything that is evil. This is my prayer. Um, verse 8, he's saying, we can do nothing against the truth. He's talking about um, himself. He's talking about his ministry. So he's, he's, it's a, you know, it's a it's, it's again a very um, a powerful statement right and a statement of humility uh, similar to you know the one he makes earlier you know, where he says um, uh, in uh, uh, you know be imitators right it's imitate me as i imitate christ it's a it's a similar statement where um, uh, where he, it's it's a statement of it's a very bold and confident statement that he makes. It's a it's a testimony, right? But at the same time, it is a, it is a statement of um, uh, it's a statement that is uh, I, that is uh, a, a made in humility. It's not an arrogant or a boastful uh, statement. Right? He's testifying of who he is. And it's uh, it, it's a very very uh, statement a statement that is uh, made in uh, uh, humility. Okay, so he's saying we can do nothing against the truth. We can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Saying that in in our all our speaking, thinking, doing, you know, we can do nothing against the uh, truth of God against who God is, we can do nothing but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. But this also we pray that you may be made complete, that you come to a place of being perfectly and thoroughly equipped and mature in Christ. So he's saying, you know, um, well, even if we seem to be weak in your eyes, Right? We seem to be weak, and you are strong. Um, that's fine. Okay, I'm I'm glad. Okay, but my prayer is that you be complete, that you made complete. You no, know, you be made complete, meaning you be thoroughly equipped. You come to that place of maturity in faith in Christ. Right. Okay, so we'll stop here, take a break, and come back for the conclusion.